very embarrassing, and uh, thus pretends to faint. Because what happens is she thinks she can get out of the room without anybody realizing that she was there. And unfortunately, a gaggle of well-dressed young men come twitter gagging in, and so she has to pretend to faint like any normal, ordinary woman would do under such circumstances. <clears throat> So I am going to read Narration and Alexia. And the steampunk scholar over here is going to read the men. I'm read the men. <laughs> I'm on it. She stayed resolutely fainted, despite the liberal application of smelling salts, which made her eyes water most tremendously, a cramp in the back of one knee, and the fact that her new ball gown was getting most awfully wrinkled. All its many layers of green trim picked the height of fashion in lightning shades, to compliment the curious bodice were being crushed into oblivion under her weight. The expected noises ensued. A good deal of yelling, much bustling about, and several loud clatters as one of the housemaids cleared away the fallen tea trolley. Then came the sound she had half anticipated, half dreaded. An authoritative voice cleared the library of both young dandies and all other interested parties who had flowed into the room upon discovery of the tableau. The voice instructed everyone to get out <laughs> while he gain the particulars from the young lady in tones that brooked no refusal. Silence descended. Mark my words. I will use something much, much stronger than smelling salts. Came a growl in Miss Terabody's left ear. The voice was low and tinged with a hint of Scotland. It would have caused Alexia to shiver and think primal monkey thoughts about moons and running far and fast if she'd had a soul. Instead, it caused her to sigh in exasperation and sit up. And a good evening to you too, Lord Macon. Lovely weather we are having for this time of year, is it not? She patted at her hair, which was threatening to fall down without the hair stick to hold it in place. Surreptitiously, she looked about for Lord Connell Macon's second in command, Professor Lyle. Lord Macon tended to maintain a much calmer temper when his beta was present. But then, as Alexia had come to comprehend, that appeared to be the main role of a beta, especially one attached to Lord Macon. Ah, Professor Lyle, how nice to see you again, she smiled in relief. Professor Lyle, the beta in question, was a slight, sandy-haired gentleman of indeterminate age and pleasant disposition, as agreeable, in fact, as his alpha was sour. He grinned at her and doffed his hat, which was of first-class design and sensible material. His cravat was similarly subtle, for, while it was tied expertly, the knot was a humble one. Miss Terabotti, how delicious to find ourselves in your company once more. His voice was soft and mild-mannered. Stop humoring her, Randolph. Barks Lord Macon. The first, fourth Earl of Wolsey was much larger than Professor Lyle and in possession of a near permanent frown. Or at least, he always seemed to be frowning when he was in the presence of Miss Alexia Terabati. Ever since the hedgehog incident, which really, honestly, had not been her fault. He also had unreasonably tawny, pretty tawny eyes, mahogany-colored hair, and a particularly nice nose. The eyes were currently glaring at Alexia from a shockingly intimate distance. Why is it, Miss Terabotti, every time I have to clean up a mess in the library, you just happen to be in the middle of it? The Earl demanded of her. Alexia gave him a withering look and brushed down the front of her green taffeta, taffeta gown, checking for bloodstains. Lord Macon appreciatively watched her do it. Miss Terabody might examine her face in the mirror each morning with a large degree of censure, but there was nothing at all wrong with her figure. He would have to have had far less soul and acute fewer urges not to notice that appetizing fact. Of course, she always went and spoiled the appeal by opening her mouth. <laughs> in his humble experience, the world had yet to produce a more vexingly verbose female. Lovely, but unnecessary. He said, indicating her efforts to brush away non-existent blood drops. Alexia reminded herself that Lord Macon and his kind were only just civilized. One simply could not expect too much from them. 
especially under delicate circumstances such as these. 